What do you make of all this talk of North Korea now? We've just learned that the missile they launched last week broke up before re-entry. That's certainly good news for the United States. Uh, I'm not convinced that he's not going to figure this out pretty, t pretty soon, though. Well, according to their history, he's going to figure it out. I mean, you know, listening to uh, McMaster talk there, you know, I, I got to tell you, our biggest enemy is ourselves and our politics. I mean, this has been going on for 50 years. This, it's not like this just happened. You know, it's not like this guy is brand new. I mean, this has been going on for uh, since we fought the Korean War, and uh, that war was not finished. And let me just tell you, anybody wants to know, you know, we can talk about any uh, uh, right that we have and how the government may or may not try to get in there and uh, like the Second Amendment, you know, and try to stop us from having weapons. As, as soon as the, uh, the government gets in and starts politicizing something, it's always going to be broken. And in 1947, uh, the uh, g the government uh, created the Secretary of Defense. And we've never fought a war since then and won it. We just go and we we go in, we do a great battle, and then we hit a stalemate and then we stop. And what you're seeing today is a direct effect because of that politicization of war. And I mean, we've gotten to a point now where we're being forced to act. And uh, that, it's really basically our fault. I, I think under the Trump administration, for the first time in a very long time, that we are seeing now the signs that America is going to fight to win. I mean, even under George Bush, in many respects, the military's hands were, were tied as they were fighting their war on terror there. Of course, under Barack Obama, we didn't fight to win. And I was convinced that Barack Obama was fighting for American losses there as he was actively trying to help our enemies out overseas by doing horrible things uh, with troops, like pulling them out of regions and, regions and sending them into chaos. Now with Trump, everything seems to be changing. The reason we're hearing so much about North Korea now is, I think, finally, we're focused on that country where we were not for really 16 years. Well, I mean, we can go 16 years, we can go back, you know, like I said, 50 years. But yes, I agree with you. And, and it's gotten worse and worse um, and more uh, uh, violent under the under this current um Kim regime and uh, or uh, Kim Jong Un regime, excuse me. And I think what we're seeing now is that we've gotten ourselves because of a lack of effort in uh, in stopping this, and because we continue to do this dialogue stuff and to do these sanctions, that with an individual like this and with China involved, it's just not, it's not going to work. And you know, when we look at the Great Seal of the United States, you have the eagle on there, and he's got uh, arrows in one of his talons and he's got um, the fig leaves in the other representing peace and dialogue. His face is turned towards the dialogue, but they're holding the arrows in reserve. And that's the problem. We have gotten further and further away from using those arrows to back up our dialogue and so or our diplomacy. We have no force to back it up. And now that Trump is doing this, it's doing two things. It's given cannon fodder to the leftists in this country and around the globe. And it's he's having to go even further to get past that that empty void that's been created, especially over the past 16 years.